what the notes and videos are it right so i didn't have the time to check after it uh, okay because uh, sorry last two days uh, tuesday i started uh, uh, marking the quiz just after the exam uh, just after the class and uh, when is yesterday i had uh, multiple back to back meetings today also i have uh, two meeting uh, one meeting at 4:15 and the another meeting at 5 and by the time that 5 pm meeting ends i'll be exhausted and uh, won't uh, remember to share just so just someone ping me just after the class and tell me to share the notes i'll do that and i'll start downloading the video okay so, so no problem yeah Yes. So anyway, I am also looking for suggestions on evaluation because uh, apparently this uh, multiple choice, uh, multiple answer type things don't work, and uh, more people than me are having the same problem. So I have talked to other faculty as well, and uh, for these theoretical type courses or uh, courses that involve detailed explanations this multiple choice route uh, doesn't seem to work so if you have suggestions yeah obviously please note that uh, there are 150 of you and uh, just one of me so keep that in mind while suggesting i am open to suggestions so anyway uh sir since you yeah. are taking the viva as it is we can yeah. extend the duration of the viva by say 5 to 10 minutes more and increase the weightage uh, other, yes, than sir, that, like, other than that other than that i mean weightage would be so weightage already you guys have voted the entire class has voted you so if people say that pe people doesn't mean the five of you people means people so if people say that uh, they want a revote i'll get a revote for the viva but uh, the thing is that uh, so uh, during the last week we have to so it shouldn't go beyond 28th so 28th of november so what i was planning was that i'll take the viva all throughout the last week so 15 to 20 minutes per person and uh, that uh, 15 into um i will end that in one week so that's the major problem that uh, even a 15 minute viva for all of you translates into one full week of effort for me yes, doing nothing sir. else so one general feedback i have about online courses is that these were good when the class size is around 20 to 25 or at most 30 beyond that uh, sir, it becomes a monster i have an idea but uh, sorry shubhashi sir i have an idea but uh, that yeah, might uh, fire away to... fire away i sir, can actually... always uh, make fun of it if it's bad yeah Tell me. So the thing is that uh, if you are, uh, if you can be late, uh, be late lenient of uh, over the grading for masses. So you can give an assignment that could be solved by groups. A good so assignment. So group right? assignment, Shubhashish. Uh, there is uh, one major. Uh, so assign my problem with assignments in the online mode in general. Is that uh, okay? I can be lenient towards people who don't want to work so no that no can, Na, let me set a law let me logic let me yes, complete sir. yes sir uh, uh, i can always be lenient towards people who don't want to work that's uh, fine but uh, i shouldn't be penalizing people who are uh, interested in working or who actually work for the assignment now the problem is that uh, two people submit an assignment i have uh, absolutely or two groups submit an assignment i have absolutely no way of knowing who say five people and uh, personal experience which uh, at, is at least 10 years more than you guys 
uh, tells me that in a group of three, only one person works. In a group of two, two people work. But in a group of three, one person works. And uh, as the number of uh, people working in a group, yeah. And as the number of people in a group approaches infinity asymptotically, the number of uh, people actually working in that group uh, approaches one again asymptotically. So, I, and uh, it will be unfair to those people uh, who actually work. So, uh, group assignments, uh, I am against them. Uh, even closed assignments, I am against them and uh, I will be against them. So, Le uh, leniency, I... uh, so me being lenient with grading, that, uh, what do you say? I will leave that as a, uh, so. Sir, actually, huh. that's, I couldn't give the complete idea itself. Yeah, tell me. So like in that group assignment also, yeah. each portion, whoever, like each specific group, group assignment would be like divided into 10 parts, for example. Okay. And each part can only be done by one member. Okay. So basically, if one of the member doesn't want to do the work, the uh -huh. group assignment will not be completed as such, but the other members who actually did their portion of the work will get the marks. Okay. So you basically... basically like Yes, sir. Okay, to so get 140 assignments. To, uh, no, 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 140. Not one, it won't be 140. Okay, like, so yeah, two problems. There will be 14 assignments on different topics, and each assignment will have a, a, a good topic such that so if 10 members are there in particular group, each member has to work individually on that particular part of that assignment. Okay, if so... If it doesn't work... Uh, okay, so, uh, have we, so it's good for econs. This model is good for econs, not for people. You know what econs are? Uh, rationally no, behaving people. Uh, ration, not, uh, rationally behaving uh, would be a uh, uh, credit to uh, that. Ideally uh, behaving people. I, not even ideally, stupid. So econs are uh, people who think only or uh, they follow a certain set of rules. They are predictable they are totally deterministic signals they uh, have no emotions and uh, they cannot be persuaded to do things so for econs your idea works great the problem is okay. i am uh, uh, dealing with 150 people not 150 econs mm -hmm. so uh, and uh, uh, the biggest problem in designing things for econs is that uh, even if there are 149 econs and one person, econs are doomed. So your idea is good for econs. Now tell me how many people uh, want to be persuaded by your friend भाई यार हो नहीं रहा समझ नहीं आ रहा पाग लंबी नाक वाला फेल कर देगा कर दे भाई प्लीज माय नोज इज क्वाइट लॉन्ग इफ यू हैव सीन मी या सो दैट वोंट वर्क आइडियली समवन शुड ब्रिंग थेनोस एंड Tell him to reduce the class size to uh, 20, 30. And uh, that would be an ideal situation for both of us. But uh, yeah, we are dealing with five times the load anyway. So because with a class of 30, I could have taken five vivas. And that would have been uh, better than a regular evaluation. Or better than uh, your uh, exams, actually. Class of uh, 150, I can take just one viva. So anyway. Coming back to random processes, we were somewhere here. No, you can laugh out loud, just mute yourself. Sorry. <laughs> so. 
so we had said that x is a or x t is a wide sense stationary random process and y t equals x t convolved with h t we had shown that r y y tau equals h tau h minus tau r x x tau and consequently for and similarly we had seen that or x y tau equals r x x tau h of minus tau convolved with and so if now we define something else so another definition so two random processes are called jointly wide sense or jointly wide sense stationary if they are individually wide sense stationary and r x y t1 t2 depends only on t2 minus t1 therefore by this definition x t and y t with y t equals x t convolved with h t are jointly st stationary fine and two random processes x t and y t are said to be independent if x t1 and y t2 so x t1 and y2 with t2 these will be random variables yes sir these are random variables and are independent for all t1 and t2 fine so we started off with a single random variable we extended our discussion to two random variables we extended that discussion on two random variables to a random vector which we evolved into a random sequence and uh, finally 
arrived at random processes now we have talked about two random processes as well and uh, we can extend this discussion to n random processes if needed so now after this point this uh, extension to further dimensions becomes trivial so we won't extend this uh, in that, that direction Now, let us look at, so we know that R Y Y tau equals R X X tau convolved with H tau convolved with H of minus tau. fine so what can i do with this say i know i want to know to know the pst of yt so if i want to know the power spectral density of yt given that uh, i know that yt is white and stationary i take the fourier transform on both sides right yes, so s y y f equals s x x f times h of f so what's the fourier transform of h of minus tau fine yes sir so this is the actually the energy spectral density of the impulse response of the system so you know that uh, all systems that have a bounded input and a bounded output more or less are energy stable or or uh, stable systems have a impulse response or most of the systems that uh, have a stable most of the stable systems have an impulse response that is an energy signal right just think about it for a second most of the systems not all because uh, those are l1 systems uh, you know l1 and l2 norms yes sir norms we know sir no sir okay you don't know l1 and l2 norms okay cool if so the course allocation meeting is today if i get digital communications i'll teach you so we yes so kind of type for older sorry the kind need for it would be really helpful for us yeah so uh, that uh, so abstract algebra is uh, included in your uh, new digital communication syllabus so you know that your syllabus has changed right as sir, compared to the previous batch yeah, yes, yeah so, so sir, if if your course is confirmed maybe you can you know take it as a yes, one sir. long course and teach yes, the sir, basics also in this course yes that's what i plan yes sir that's what i'm planning that uh, uh, the electrical people have to suffer the least that way because there are electrical uh, people who are thinking why are we bothered with this so that way the electrical people will have to suffer the least and if today it's confirmed then obviously after we discuss noise uh, sampling and all i'll uh, teach using uh, uh, or uh, 
the digital communication so your principles of communication includes both digital and analog communication if you look at the syllabus okay. so analog communication i'll finish whenever it fin ends and digital communication part i will teach using uh, that digital course only fine yes sir and uh, electrical people if any you're okay with it anyone from electrical attending this class things are bad maybe when they'll watch the video uh, yes sir it's not a problem yeah okay cool so you are sorry uh yeah uh, animesh you are from electrical uh yeah triple yeah okay cool I mean, uh, sorry, I call electric means the department is electrical anyway. So uh, triple E, cool. So thank you. So that, and uh, this is the response of a system. And similarly, our or S X Y of F equals. S X X of F H conjugate of F uh, fine S Y X of F equals S X X of F H F equals conjugate of x x y of f fine so the power spectral density one property that you should remember power spectral density is always real and positive by definition Sir, why are we bothered with S X Y when we are getting S Y Y directly? S X Y is called the cross spectral density. So, this uh, for a practical application, you could uh, possibly download my PhD thesis and look at it. <laughs> I've used it extensively, but. Uh, P just this is this is the cross spectral density and like you define the cross correlation this is something that you should know keep this back in the back of your head now another uh, a direct application would be say i have zt equals xt plus yt at any given point of time as uh, multiple people would uh, be happy to tell me that uh, the probability density functions would be the uh, convolution of the individual prob probability densities of x t and y t at that point of time right this you have done in your probability course yes sir yeah so we won't worry about that rather r Z Z tau. I won't prove this. I leave this as an exercise. Now X T and Y T are any two random processes. Note that X T and Y T are are sorry any two wide sense stationary. Random processes. R x x tau plus R y y tau plus R x y tau plus R y x tau. Fine. If x t and y t are complex valued
R X X R X Y tau equals the value of X tau or T plus tau by two Y T minus tau by two. complex conjugate fine r y x tau equals expected value of x t minus tau by 2 complex conjugate y t plus tau by 2 fine tau fine this is one result another result is now due to this uh, conjugate symmetry if i take the fourier transform on both sides i get sorry not minus this this you can uh, work out yourself using basic properties of fourier transform so s z z f equals this is okay yes sir fine now we come to gaussian processes just a second there has been a power cut i cannot uh, yeah so a random process is known as gaussian if for all n and t the random variables x ti i goes from 1 to n have a jointly gaussian pdf fine so this is the definition and consequently since uh, a gaussian 
random or sets of gaussian random variables are described using their second order moments so for uh, gaussian process the knowledge of oh sorry knowledge of its mean mxt and auto correlation rxx t1 t2 gives a complete statistical description of the process fine so this is uh, another result so for gaussian random for gaussian random processes we will simply state results if so this is uh, a theorem theorem with an proof or actually theorems with intuitive intuitive proofs because i'll state multiple of these one if the gaussian random process xt is passed through an lti system then the output yt is also a gaussian process one two in case of a gaussian process wide sense stationarity t implies strict sense stationarity three a sufficient condition for the ergodicity of <laughs> zero me gaussian process is minus infinity to infinity less than infinity the process is xt and yt ah uh, jointly gaussian if for all m and n and t1 tm tau and tau n x 
Diese waren. Zwei, drei, drei. Is an M plus N dimensional Gaussian. Five, the last one. For jointly Gaussian processes uncorrelated ness and independence are equivalent fine Whew, too many properties so let's uh, look at these one by one if the gaussian random process is xt is if a Gaussian random process XT is passed through an LTA system, then the output YT is also also a Gaussian random process. You you have heard of the central limit theorem, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you can view the integration as a limit of sums. And uh, there uh, you can prove this. In case of a Gaussian process, in case uh, of a Gaussian process, white sense stationarity implies strict sense stationarity. This is simple because you say that a Gaussian process is totally described by its autocorrelation function. Or for any n, it will be described by the. So Gaussian random variables in vector form, they are described totally by the mean vector and the covariance matrix. Right? Yes. Yes. So if uh, the covariance matrix of a uh, so if it it's this described by the mean and the covariance matrix so in the case of a process since we describe process at for all t and and this should be true you, you basically described as an n dimensional mean and n dimensional covariance matrix fine what are we describing in n dimensional uh, the process so uh, uh, when we talked about the stationarity of a process the strict sense stationarity. We said that we take n point samples of the process. Yes. And if those n point samples are uh, the PDF of uh, the joint PDF of those n point samples is uh, independent of time, then the process is called strict sense, uh, strict sense stationary. Okay. That's how we define six, uh, strict sense stationarity. Okay. So since now everything is describable in the terms of an autocorrelation function. Okay. And the joint PDF in and for n points will also be described by their uh, uh, covariance matrix. Yes. Because of that, wide sense stationarity implies strict sense stationarity. Strict sense stationarity. Need to work on that. Third, a sufficient condition for the ergodicity of a stationary zero mean Gaussian process is this. This you have to, unfortunately, we do not have the luxury of time to prove this. This proof is slightly involved. So, a uh, sufficient condition for the ergodicity of a stationary zero mean Gaussian process is this: the processes x t and y t are jointly Gaussian if for all m and n. This is a is an m plus n dimensional Gaussian distribution. This is also straightforward. For jointly Gaussian processes, uncorrelatedness and independence are equivalent. This is also intuitive. So these five properties of Gaussian random processes and so these five properties are clear except the third one. That you have to remember, unfortunately remember as it is. Rahul, you want to say something? No, sir, no, sir. OK, cool. So this and uh, 
सर यश भशीष सर डी व्हिच प्रॉपर्टी इज बेटर लाइक एसएसएस और डब्ल्यूएसएस वी डोंट से बेटर वी से स्ट्रांगर और वीकर so better uh, because better you have to quantify better in which sense see if you so want like, if uh, I... more uh, let me complete my sentence if you want uh, more uh, well behaved random variables then obviously you would want strict sense stationarity but if you want easier to analyze random variables then you want wide sense stationarity so ease of analysis and uh, the well what do you say the guarantees on theoretical results are two different things so yeah. strict sense stationarity results in stronger guarantees but uh, is uh, notoriously hard to achieve wide sense stationarity results in weaker guarantees but uh, is uh, easy to analyze so it actually depends on your application there is no better or, or worse sudden so for practical application do we wide sense stationarity want... is good enough okay for communication systems unless uh, stated otherwise wide sense stationarity is good enough okay now the last topic for this day the process xt is called right if it has a flat power spectral density in other words random process is white if all the frequencies contribute equally to the power spectrum fine that yes, is r x x oh sorry c x x f equals sum k fine so only power signals can be white so random processes are by nature, by definition power signals okay okay because random processes extend into all time and they, their energies need not converge so these are by definition power signals okay okay so that is this but the power of a white process is also infinite if you try to integrate this over all the frequencies yeah the power yeah, that's why i came to that conclusion yeah so these are power signals and the power is infinite now this leads us to another so we take the fourier transform of <coughs> this fine this in this fourier transform pair this we have done yes sir yes sir yeah so which means rxx tau cxx f or sxx f oh, sorry s s s s s s sorry my bad so slight uh, inconsistency in my notes so rxx tau equals expected value of xt plus tau by 2 c 
sir yeah so that rx6 tau is equals to c times delta tau so what is c so k times delta tau my my notes are slightly different i am using my notes so sorry my bad fine delta tau is yeah delta tau is visible now yes sir so yes sir this means that uh, these two are equal which means that xt is uncorrelated so assuming xt to be zero mean so white process we generally talk about this in case of zero mean processes only so this means that if xt is zero mean then xt is uncorrelated with its time shifted versions or in case of a gaussian process x t1 will be independent or x t will be independent of x t plus minus tau or t plus minus delta for all delta not equal to 0 fine yes sir so now we'll stop at a dramatic point because obviously we'll do something we don't have the time to start something new right now but uh, so xt let xt be a zero mean or white sense stationary zero mean white gaussian process that gets added to signal and fine let uh, x t be a white sense stationary zero mean white gaussian process that it's added so you send you transmit a signal st you are transmitting a signal st and while going through the channel because the channel has all sorts of electrical disturbances there is uh, so sunlight are basically electromagnetic waves we'll discuss more so, uh, sources of disturbances uh, in the upcoming classes so what happens is that uh, this random variable wt gets added and you receive yt sir xt oh xt okay fine xt and you receive yt equals st plus wt now at each point of st a gaussian random variable has been added that's what a gaussian process means right yes and at each point of time the value of that gaussian random variable is different right yes, because sir. it's independent yes sir so because at any two points this is white and because of that 
it's uh, independent so at each point of time you add a different gaussian random variable to what you are receiving or to the signal fine yes sir. yes this is noise this is the ultra famous additive white gaussian noise or white noise that uh, you have been hearing about before starting communications you have heard of additive white gaussian noise right yes sir yes, yes sir. sir yeah so this is the world famous uh, or as they say india may world famous uh, additive white gaussian noise so it's additive it adds to the signal it's white because uh, it has a flat power spectral density and uh, at each point in time it takes a gaussian distribution and sir, uh, yes adit no go ahead sir yeah so and because of this and because this is random this is a random process this noise is random process uh, our uh, we do not know how to subtract this from a received communication signal that is why this makes the life of commun communication engineers hard that's why we spent so much time in characterizing probability yes sir now tell me sir will we be i mean for the studying why uh, why the noise in the environment so yeah we why will, is it a w g n in nature yeah I mean, why is it a w g n that uh, will simply brush away with the central limit theorem okay okay that that we'll brush away but uh, we'll obviously be talking about the sources of noise we'll sir, talk about what causes this noise yes shubhashish sir if there's additive white gaussian noise is there some multiplicative white gaussian noise as well there is multiplicative noise there is multiplicative noise yes and uh, a lot of times it's gaussian and uh, we generally want it to be gaussian because gaussian random variables have this uh, have these nice characteristics that we can play around with so okay. multiplicative noise actually it's called fading and uh, that we won't be covering in this course that we won't be covering in your digital communications course that uh, if at all you ever uh, do a course on wireless communications there you will cover it so there is something I, there is a multiplicative noise so can i confirm one thing yeah uh, is the is it about relay fading yeah uh, yes okay so the fading coefficient is basically a multiplicative noise okay so but uh, we'll stay away from it for uh, the purpose of these two courses sir uh, yeah. this is a side question but uh, so most of the i mean in prokaryotes book that you had suggested uh, for the random processes uh, chapter yeah. most uh, they have assumed the signals to be real in nature right and uh, yes uh, so we have done things for complex signals okay okay sir okay so we'll uh, this real and uh, complex confluence next lecture we'll address so how do real and complex meet because you might remember that uh, when we started this course we talked about uh, something called uh, baseband equivalence of signals Hil the hilbert yes, transform yes sir. yes sir. and uh, those are complex yes, the okay. signals generated after a hilbert transformation are complex right sir so if i i have to read this particular topic uh, is there this some other book uh, prokis is uh, good enough it's okay okay sir prokis is good enough just that uh, uh, what happens is that uh, i follow what prokis says prokis is the textbook for this chapter just that uh, my idea of presenting that material or my sequencing is slightly different okay the sir. big picture remains the same so let yes. us stop here so uh, just a reminder to share the notes yes yes i'll do that
so let's stop here thank you sir bye have a nice day bye sir bye sir bye